Hey, and welcome to week six of our Fresh Start curriculum. And we are so glad that you are with us today. And uh, we're going to be talking about something that I love, and that is the Bible. We're going to be looking at how do we understand the Bible? What, is it, uh, what does it talk about? What does it mean for our life? How can we use it to apply certain things and, and what it looks like? And we're so excited about that uh, for our group time today, the discussion. And uh, I really hope and pray that, uh, that this session in particular really impacts your life. And, and if you're in a discussion time within a group or as you study the word at home, uh, I just, I'm really believing that God would use his word to, to show you some things in your life and it would be a great encouragement to you. Yeah, before we dive in, I just want to encourage each and every one of you to keep going, keep pressing in. You know, um, if I could encourage you with one thing is just keep going, keep moving forward. The best is yet to come both in this group and in your life with Jesus. Absolutely. And so in this session today, we're talking about the Bible. Come on, that B-R-B-L-E. The B -R -B -L -E. <laughs> now, we used to, seriously, we used to have a song uh, called the B-I-B-L-E. Uh, yes, that's a book for me. That's right. Uh, but, Come on. <laughs> you know, being excited about the Bible might be a little bit strange for some of us um, because it's, it's, to many of us, it's a tough thing. Now, I, I brought my, my Bible uh, as an example. This is just the small pocket version. Oh my gosh, everything just <laughs> popped up. So I don't know if you'll be able to see it. You know, you might have to squint a little bit, um, but this is my King James Version Bible. Um, actually, it's not mine, but it looks just like the one that uh, my grandma used to have in her house. And uh, I remember thinking some things when I would look at this big, ginormous uh, Bible. And maybe some of you can relate to this, that, uh, you know, maybe the Bible is something that is just... Uh, so much, like it's a right. lot uh, to understand. Maybe it, that it's intimidating or hard to understand. Or for some of us, maybe it's just a, I mean, look at all those pages. It's just yeah. a list of, of rules and, and all of this stuff. And then lastly, that, that it's old. I mean, this isn't that old, but when you consider that the Bible, you know, is thousands of years old, I mean, is it relevant to our life? You know, I think that uh, I think a lot of us, because of questions like that, we often don't know where to start. I mean, you look, and of course, if, if you fit that in your pocket, it's because you're wearing the <laughs> jeans from the 90s. That's right. Uh, those Jinkos. Jinko jeans, and you're going to have some big pockets, and it would fit for sure. <laughs> That's right. Um, but so often, I think that when we think about the Bible, when we see something like that, because especially these kinds of Bibles were very prevalent in people's homes, maybe your grandma has one, or, or uh, your grandparents, or something like that, and you would look at it, and maybe it was there for decoration, opened up to some specific specific passage and, and, and you would look at that and just think gosh like I can't I can't do that or man there's just there's so much information there's so much content um, and I don't even know where to begin and I think that a lot of us actually struggle with that of, mm -hmm. of when we first start to walk with the Lord where do I begin yeah uh, what what should I be doing yeah um, well here's here's something that I was reading the other day it's actually a, a story about a man whose life was changed simply by the word of God. And so, so when you're thinking about like what impact can this book uh, that's thousands of year, years old have on me? Well, here, here's an example. Um, this is a testimony. It says, as a partner in a successful IT firm, I traveled all over the world, especially in Australia. So I stayed in many, many hotels over the years, hundreds, but something was always missing in my life. All that I had, my career, my financial success never satisfied me. And every now and then, when there was nothing on TV in my hotel room, he says, I'd pull a Gideon's Bible out of the top drawer of the bedside table wherever I was staying. That's how God started to speak to me. It's how he grabbed my attention. And he goes on to say, I remember one time in a, in a hotel standing on the eighth floor uh, balcony, looking down at the concrete below. And he says, I, I was being pulled in two directions. My loss and grief and desperation were calling me over the edge. I was standing there wondering whether to jump or not. And somehow through what I'd read in the Gideon's Bible the night before, God was calling me back in to pray. Uh, I went inside, I knelt down at my bed and said, Lord, if you're out there, now would be a really good time to show up. Those were his exact words. That's all I had, he says, and that's all it took for God to wrap his loving arms around me. Within just a few months of giving my life to Christ, I found myself at Bible college studying a Bachelor of Ministry degree. You know, what's amazing about that to me, and 
is that even this moment for this gentleman and in, in his story in his life was that it, it actually it wasn't a sermon, hmm. it wasn't a great worship service, yeah. it, it wasn't you know giving it an offering, it wasn't any of these other things. You know, even just a small group, even though God can use these things, mm-hmm. I think it's interesting that it was it was simply in a hotel room right where he was. Uh, the word of God was available, mm-hmm. uh, and uh, and because of that encounter with that, this life this man's life changed. Yeah. You know, his future changed, and in a moment he surrendered his life to Christ. And, and actually, what's interesting is that he was. It was you could see in his story that it was something that happened uh, over and over. That it was mm-hmm. out of curiosity. His curiosity eventually led to transformation in his life. And I've heard of stories like this all across the world that you know people never being witnessed to, never stepping foot in a church, mm-hmm. uh, simply just reading a Bible that was available and being transformed by the powerful story of God's love and redemption that they, they all they had. Right was God's word, which is what this is. It's literally God's word, his love story to us. You know, I think what's interesting about that is making that statement that all they had was God's word. And I can, I could actually attest to this in my own life. Mm -hmm. That's all you need. Yep. Not only is it all, if that's all that you have, it's all that you need. Yeah. You know, getting a hold of, of the, the Word of God, the Bible, uh, understanding the truth of God's Word, it's a journey. Mm-hmm. Uh, it's something that will that will change your life if you will let it. And I guarantee you, more than anything else, it's what you need. Yeah. And, uh, and so it's uh, it's something that I promise you, it's, it's going to come alive. We talked about the empowerment of the Holy Spirit, mm-hmm. the Holy Spirit, you know, guiding and leading and directing us. When we read the Word, He'll actually make that Word come to life, and it'll, it'll transform you if you let it. What I want you guys to see today is that this wasn't written for people in another time. It was written for them, but it was also written just as much for each of you. That this can be a thousand years old, but it's God's word to you right here and right now. And if we'll let it, it will speak to us. God will speak to us through his word. And and here's the thing, you don't have to have pressure on you to have it all figured out right now, because yeah. I, I know that this can look like a lot but I promise you, if you'll just start reading and just start investing the time, just start you know, pouring into his word and yeah. learning about God and growing closer to him, I promise you he'll reveal himself to you. Absolutely. Yeah. You know, what I love about this is we get ready to, to jump into, uh, we have a few things we want to talk to you about. Something just to help simplify this. What this book holds is is a bunch of stories of God's interaction with men, mm-hmm. uh, God's intent for mankind, the ones that He created. Uh, it's stories of victory. It's stories of failures. It's times of correction. It's times of encouragement. Uh, it's a source for wisdom and understanding. Mm-hmm. Uh, so there's all kinds of things that are wrapped up inside of this book that are intended to help give you visual pictures to help teach you how to live for the glory of God. Um, and so the first thing that we want to see here is that we have to make the Bible the foundation of our lives. Mm -hmm. Now, there's a lot of other things, and that may sound strange, especially as a first step, but it's vital. Uh, As followers of Jesus, we believe that the Bible uh, is is what we would say is the inerrant Word of God, that there is no, uh, it's true, there's no error in it, Uh, it is accurate uh, in what it says, and and so the Bible demands uh, demands really to be approached as the foundation upon which everything is built, our lives, our decision, our worldview, Mm -hmm. uh, all of these things, they they really have to come from here. We can't afford to have a mixture of what the world offers and then what the Word says. Yeah, Matthew 7, 24. Four says this, everyone who hears these words of mine and puts them into practice is like a wise man, a wise woman who built their house on the rock. You know, one, one of the reasons the Bible makes such a great foundation uh, beyond the fact that it's true is because even though everything else in this world is moving, the Bible doesn't change. God's word is the same yesterday, today, and forever. And you know, especially in this generation, we're tempted to build our lives on some other foundations, some false foundations. Mm-hmm. Um, and, and one of these false foundations is our feelings. You know, that, wow. uh, that's one thing uh, that, that I think maybe most of us have tried to base our lives on. Yeah. Uh, and our feelings uh, seem so real in the moment. I mean, y- you've been there. Uh, they can often lead to major decisions that, that mm-hmm. may be good or they may be equally bad. But the problem is, They lie to us almost every single time, and they're Mm -hmm. constantly changing. Another false foundation is reason. I mean, uh, this is really popular right now for sure, but it's also dangerous. Proverbs 16 verse 25 says, There is a way that seems right to a man. In other words, his reason and his reasoning abilities, there's a way that seems right to a man, but in the end, it leads to death. Wow. 
Yeah, it's so good. Yeah, so this is this is more and more of a move that our culture is making, and 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 this is the way that they're learning to live. And it's according to our own rules. It's mm. according to whatever we define as truth, and yeah. and and that's really a dangerous thing because yeah. what may be true for you, that's fine, but it's not true for me. Mm -hmm. uh, the next thing you know, the world ends up in chaos. Mm -hmm. uh, we don't respect each other. We don't we don't live with honor and integrity towards yeah. each other. We don't live in peace, and the world ends up in chaos yeah. because everyone is trying to do what seems right in their own eyes. And it's interesting because we're talking about building a foundation. And it also says in the book of James chapter one, uh, as we, uh, verse eight, that, that, that uh, if we have asked of God and we're looking to receive from God, mm -hmm. uh, that if, we're, if we doubt, if we're not basing our life upon the word, it actually says that, that, that he is a double-minded man, unstable in all of his ways. Mm -hmm. And so I think one of the things about the word of God is the word of God will actually, as a solid foundation, as we saw that a second ago in Matthew 7, 24, that if we will build uh, anyone who hears these words of mine and puts them into practice, that's mm -hmm. a big key, not just hears them, the one who does them, yeah. uh, that, that if he will do these things, not being a hearer only, but a doer of the word, mm -hmm. that he'll actually become stable in his life if we hear only uh, and, uh, and these types of things. And we're actually going to have this amazing amount of instability. And yeah. when we try to substitute all of these other things instead of what God says, mm -hmm. or we try to take a mixture of the pieces I like... Mm -hmm. and, and then other things that I'm going to add to my life, all of a sudden now we have a faulty foundation mm -hmm. that's eventually going to cause us to stumble and fall. Yeah, our, I love that. Our world uh, really believes that truth is something that's just kind of like uh, can move with mm -hmm. how we feel or what we think or what the new fad is. But right. truth is an anchor. Yes. Truth is set in stone. And really that's the only way... That, that we can find that stability yeah, in our life. Absolutely. Another false foundation is success. And this is an important one, I think, for all of us. Mm -hmm. um, this is an age-old uh, false foundation, and it's really woven into American culture, into the heart of the American dream. It's a daily temptation to build our lives on success, on money, on fame, on wealth. It, it says that it, you know if I have success then what I'm doing to get that success must be the truth, must wow. be true, and must be a good foundation. But, but here's the thing. Uh, it's in the moment uh, that, that things don't go our way. Right. And when everything does fall apart, like if our truth was based on something that's not right. solid, that's not a firm foundation, then we're, we're going to be in bad shape. We really are. And so it's important for us to uh, to recognize that it, the good news is if, if we'll make the decision to, uh, to to set the Bible as the foundation of our life, it it's really not as mm -hmm. difficult as it seems, and mm -hmm. and we just have to make this decision. And I think that's the the simplicity of it is it's making a a definitive decision that no matter what I find myself in, whatever the situation may be, that my first move is mm -hmm. going to be towards the Word of God. Mm -hmm. uh, and, and so that's not something that's super difficult. It's just making the decision. I, I just yeah. say, you know what? No. Instead of trying to do this my own way, God, help me to see what your word says about it. Yeah, and that's so important. That really leads us to the next thing, our second decision. If we really want this to be the most precious thing in our life, and it can be, we, we've got to make sure that it's our foundation. But then we also, number two, make it the first part of our daily lives. Make it the first part of your daily life. We need to yeah. read the Bible every day. Wow. Romans 10, 17 says, faith comes from hearing and hearing through the word of of God. Now, the best time for us to hear from God is in the morning, right? No, I, I don't know. Not for me. <laughs> <laughs> no. we're, we're, here, but, but if we want to make it something that establishes us for right. our day, you know, uh, you've probably heard plenty of pastors say, now the first thing you got to do when you wake up, and you may have wondered why. Uh, <laughs> when you're reading the Bible, first thing when you wake up, uh, it's so interesting how it calibrates your day. Absolutely. You know, and so whether you wake up at six o'clock in the morning or whether maybe when you, you know, maybe waking up is not just when you open your eyes, but when you can actually have a, Come on. a, a thought. About six <laughs> cups of coffee later. Yeah, <laughs> when you're actually coherent, you know, whatever it is to you to wake up, um, right. start your day with, with the word of God. Make, make it the first part of your daily life. Psalm 119 verse 105 says, your word is a lamp to my feet and a light to my path. See, it can actually be something that calibrates and locks in yeah. your entire day. 
You know, when I was thinking about that, that why would it be important to start your day with the word? Mm-hmm. The reality of it is, is that you can't draw upon what you haven't deposited in you. Mm-hmm. You you can't draw off of the word. So the word will give you life. The word will give you strength. The word gives you wisdom and understanding, mm-hmm. direction, all these other things. But if I choose to just go about my day first, and maybe I'm thinking, oh, I'll just read it at the end of the day. Mm-hmm. The, the problem with that is, is, and even though it's still, it's good to read the word anytime. Let me go ahead and say that. But the thing is, is in the, in the midst of our day, we're going to mm-hmm. face challenges. We're going to face obstacles, things we need to overcome, areas we need wisdom. And so when, when we put God's word first, when we seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, all the other things will be added unto us. Mm. And so in the moments where we need it, in the moments where it's necessary, because I've, I've planted it like seed in my heart, mm-hmm. now I have the ability to, to pull off of that uh, as a resource for my life instead of just trying mm-hmm. to struggle through my day. I can now walk through it with the Lord and he can speak to me mm-hmm. continually through his word. And something else I want to point out is in Romans ten seventeen, it doesn't say that faith comes from having heard. Mm-hmm. That word hearing is a present tense word. That's right. And so it's this process of continually hearing. It's not just what pastor said on Sunday mm-hmm. or in the small group that I'm in. It's if faith comes by hearing, a continual process of hearing. As I read the word and I'm, I'm hearing what God has said, as I'm in a small group, as I go throughout my day, it's important that that process right. of hearing is going to cause faith to arise. And when faith arises in you, you'll be an overcomer. Mm. You'll be able to overcome the obstacles, the challenges of life, and you can walk in victory all the days of your life because of who's living on the inside It's of you. true. Uh, I, I've been a pastor coming up on 20 years now. And I've worked with adults, with students, uh, with new believers, <laughs> with mature Christians, a little bit of everything. And when anyone asks me how, how to experience God on a daily basis, um, I always have the, the, same, the same answer, how, how to grow closer to God. I tell them this, um, get in God's Word. Yeah. <laughs> I've seen so many people who are struggling in their walk with God find new momentum, and growth simply by taking that first step of putting God first. And something that that we uh, want to suggest to you is something we'll call the first 15. That if, that if you'll if you'll make God a part of your first 15 minutes of the day, uh, which is simply this, when you wake up or when you're <laughs> awake, <laughs> simply spend your first five minutes in God's Word. And after that, uh, five minutes in worship, maybe set on you know, Spotify or turn on you know, just, one, just a one worship song and then finish it out with five minutes in prayer, offering your day to God. Five minutes in the Word, five minutes in worship, five minutes in prayer, and it really will set up your day for success. It'll calibrate your day and set you on course uh, to really live your day God's way. Absolutely. You know? And, uh, and so this kind of leads us to the third area, and that's, uh, and that's just really that we want to make the Bible flourish uh, mm-hmm. in our life. And, and there's nothing like when you start noticing the Word of God, mm-hmm. uh, and, and, and the Word begins to shape you, and it begins mm-hmm. to mold your life. And I love that because that's what the Word is designed to do. That's right. It's the, it's the, we talk about transformation and, and renewing our mind and changing the way we think. The way we do that is through the mm-hmm. Word. Uh, and so it, it begins to shape your life. It molds you. It, it changes, helps you to change your decisions, your moments, your days, your relationships. Um, and, and so when you when you face a situation, you have an answer. Uh, you feel like life is out of control, yet in the midst of all of the chaos, because of the word, you can have peace because you know God's mm-hmm. word is true. What he says is unchanging, yeah. uh, and it's going to benefit you as as the Bible begins to come to life, and uh, and it's going to bring just this life and flourishing into you. Yeah. You know, it's it's been the bestseller <laughs> for years mm-hmm. now, mm-hmm. Um, but I don't want you to read it just like any other book. Right. It's not just meant to be words on a page and information for our heads. It's not just to meant, to, meant to be entertainment. Uh, it's actually meant to be active and, and yeah. activated in our lives. Hebrews 4.12 says this, The Word of God is living and active. The book is alive. It's sharper than any double-edged sword. It penetrates even to dividing soul and spirit, joints and marrow. It judges the thoughts and attitudes of the heart. So it's not just something that's meant to sit on a shelf, and it's not just something that's meant to sit in here. It's something that's meant to be used and utilized, something that's active and can flourish, can grow, can live out through our life. So good. You know, so here's a couple of practical things um, that we think are going to help you. So the mm-hmm. first thing is is uh, is to find a translation of the Bible. Now I think you got to be careful in it because some mm-hmm. things can be a little off. But uh, you know, finding a translation of the Bible. We of course we're talking about the King James Bible and. 
And, uh, you know, that's, it's kind of the, the, the king's English and a lot of the ifs and the sure. things. And, and that's difficult, I think, for a lot of us to understand. The funny thing is that's actually what I started reading. I, I grew up on the King James. <laughs> in you know? the beginning. And uh, me personally now, I read out of the New King James, and it uh, is, is probably the closest to the original as far as that part goes. But uh, there's so many uh, great versions out there, you know, whether it's the, the NIV, which is the New International Version, the New Living Translation, the NLT, uh, the English Standard Version. And often even when I study, I kind of jump in between them because mm -hmm. You have to remember that this, the Bible wasn't written in the English language. The mm -hmm. Bible was written, the Old Testament, in the Hebrew and Aramaic, the New Testament, the Greek. Mm -hmm. And so just like our words, the same word can mean multiple things. It's the same in those. And so mm -hmm. um, it's good to, to be able to look at those things. Other things that's helpful is a study Bible. Mm -hmm. um, I know that uh, the Life and the Spirit study Bible, that one is amazing. Mm -hmm. uh, but study Bibles will the, help you. I think I have the application Bible, the application study. It's yeah. great. And so there's so many uh, different translations, study Bibles. All of these things are designed designed to help you. Uh, the study Bibles particularly, they'll add uh, commentary, which mm -hmm. is other people expounding upon uh, what uh, what the scripture is saying mm -hmm. to them and what their understanding of it is, cultural context. And, uh, and so those things are all really, really helpful. Mm -hmm. and, and the final decision when it comes uh, to the Bible, it, it, this is a really good one, and this, this kind of brings us to a close, is Make it a weapon yes. for the challenges of your life. Now, remember, like it's it's great to it, it needs to be a foundation. It needs to establish your direction. It needs to be a, a daily thing, and uh, it needs to flourish in your life. But we also have to use it as a weapon for the challenges of life. It, it does us no good to just have head knowledge yeah. if it can't be placed and used uh, in our life. And that may sound funny, you know, a weapon for the challenges in our life. Well. The, the Word of God talks about it specifically. Ephesians 6.13 says, Therefore, put on the full armor of God. That's defensive and offensive weaponry. Mm -hmm. uh, so when the day of evil comes, you may be able to stand your ground. Take the sword of the Spirit, which is the Word of God. And then Ephesians 6.17 in the Message Bible, it says, God's Word, I love how this says it, God's Word is an indispensable weapon. This is, this is just a powerful truth about God's Word. It's not just information. It's not just revelation. It's also ammuni ammunition for the battles that we face in life. Absolutely. And I think it's important to understand that, especially if you're new in your walk, maybe you're also mm -hmm. here in Foundations today and you're coming through this as part of our next step uh, in our church. But we have to understand that there, there is a, a spiritual battle mm -hmm. uh, that's taking place all around us, that there is a spiritual world uh, that, that you and I cannot see physically, but it is just as real, if not more, than what we can see with our five physical senses. And so we can face physical battles, and so often there are physical tools. But the thing is, is in this life, we are also going to be facing spiritual battles, mm -hmm. and they are going to require spiritual tools and spiritual weapons. Mm -hmm. uh, they're going to require things that natural man's natural wisdom and understanding cannot solve. Mm -hmm. um, and so this is why the word is important because it is it's uh, it is this it's this weapon that we use. And I love that. Uh, why is it so powerful? Isaiah fifty five eleven. Uh, the, the Lord is talking and speaking to the prophet Isaiah, and he says, So shall my word be that goes forth from my mouth. It mm -hmm. shall not return to me void, but it shall accomplish what I please, uh, and it shall prosper into the thing where I sent it. So when God speaks, there's always power for whatever he has said. Mm -hmm. There's always power for that thing to, to happen. And that's yeah. and he speaks about our enemies. He speaks about our prosperity. Yeah. He speaks about our joy. Um, and so all of these things, there is a power that comes mm -hmm. with the word of God that is a weapon against the enemy. Me. Mm -hmm. Isaiah 54, 17, one of my favorite scriptures, mm -hmm. is it says, No weapon formed against me shall prosper, and every tongue that rises up against me in judgment I'll condemn, for it's the heritage mm -hmm. of the servants of the Lord. See, God's word is powerful, so and we good. can apply that in the situations that we're in. Yeah. And uh, and so whether it's to defeat the enemy, whether it's encouragement in my life, you just got to learn how to use it. I've, I've found myself praying for uh, a few people over the last few weeks for medical conditions. And along with prayers, uh, I try and help them find a verse that they can stand on, you know, that they, that they have a foundation on during their battle. And, and it's just amazing to see the confidence uh, that they left with knowing the truth of the Word of God, uh, the fact that it's a weapon that we can use. And in your life, no matter what situation or challenge you face, find, find some scripture that you can stand on. You know, I, I promise there's a verse for you. I promise that there's something that, that you, can, you can find that no matter what you're facing, it's going to apply to. And that same verse will give you confidence. Just like Pastor Joel said, it comes with authority. Yes. Uh, and, and, and that same kind of victory uh, can be yours as well. You know, 
one of the best things that we can do is memorize scripture. Absolutely. You know? And that seems to be something that we don't talk as much about anymore, and we should talk about more. That's mm -hmm. why we're talking with you about it today, that committing scripture to memory, being able to, a moment ago, I was able to quote off, you know, just a mm -hmm. couple of verses that, that I've learned. Uh, Psalms 119 actually says, thy word have I hid in my heart that mm -hmm. I might not sin against you. There's something about hiding the word of God in our heart and, and committing it to memory uh, to where in those moments I talked about earlier, when you face a situation, you mm -hmm. have something to draw on. Mm -hmm. So it's like committing that scripture to memory yeah. is, is something that will be like a well that continues to refresh you mm -hmm. and, to, and to, to aid you and assist you uh, in your walk with Jesus. And so, so super, is so super, good. super valuable. Well, I, I hope you've picked up something from, from what we've talked about the Bible today. Um, just to recap, uh, first of all, make that decision to make the Bible, make God's word your foundation for your life. Second, make it the first part of every single day <laughs> when you yeah. when you wake up <laughs> or mm. when you're awake. That's right. Uh, coffee, and then coffee. allow it to, to flourish in your life. Allow it to take an uh, active role in your life and finally make it a weapon uh, for every challenge that you face. Absolutely. Well, as we close out this session, I'm going to pray for you today and then we'll join you next time. Let's pray. Father, we come before you now in Jesus' name. Father, I ask that you would open our eyes to see uh, in the word. God, give us the ability to understand. Holy Spirit, we invite you to help us that as we read, that you would reveal truth to us. Lord, that you would help us to establish our life upon the word and that that word and our understanding of it would become the rock and the foundation on which our life is built. And Father, when the storms of life come and when the the, 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 the rain comes and the and the wind beats upon the house and there's, there's the challenges of our life, I thank you that because of what our life is founded upon, I thank you that we're going to be firmly established and we will not be shaken. Uh, Father, I thank you that as they as they develop a hunger for the word, uh, Lord, that you would speak to them, reveal truth, reveal yes. the greatness of who you are. And uh, Father, we just pray for the discussion time. We pray for their personal study time. Illuminate their, to their hearts the word of God. Illuminate to them the truth of, of what you said and that it would make great impact in their life. And I also pray that, that as we sow the word, the word says that the enemy wants to come and steal it. Father, I ask that you would have protection in their hearts and in their lives to not allow the enemy to come and to rob them of the word of God that's being planted into their hearts, but it would grow into a firmly established uh, just tree of righteousness that would produce amazing things for the kingdom in their life and through their life. Father, we thank you for it. We bless you today in Jesus' name. Everyone said amen and amen. Thanks for joining us today. We look forward to being with you next week.